bombshell after bombshell have been coming out recently regarding different streamers and YouTubers getting exposed online for inappropriate behavior that has been directed towards minors. While the egregious and insidious behavior should cause us to revolt from such people, the real question that needs to be asked is how have parents been handing their kids off to the daycare of Twitch, YouTube, and Discord servers, all the while not realizing just how depraved these young men and women can be? Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we're going to be looking at a number of different Twitch streamers and YouTubers and very popular individuals, especially with youth, who have been exposed for their inappropriate behavior towards the very youth that are consuming their material. But before we get into this, we would love for you to like this video as well as subscribe to the Good Fight Ministries YouTube channel. And you always can check out goodfight.org where we have a ton of material for any questions you might have, biblical questions, as well as exposés and different things that you can check out there. Guys, I will say this, and for maybe for a number of parents or and hopefully for a number of believing parents, they have never heard of some of these names. But the truth is when we see the numbers, the videos, the views, the, the money that is being poured into them, of these streamers, whether on Twitch, whether on YouTube, whether on some Discord server that they're talking on, it doesn't matter. The truth is, is that they are influencing young people more than a lot, a lot of parents realize. And it is so important for us to talk about this because all of the material we're going to talk about, whether it's filming yourself live, talking video games, whether it's doing videos for Mr. Beast or Whatever it may be, all of these things are being consumed by, for hours and hours and hours. And what's coming out now regarding a lot of the biggest of the biggest of these streamers, of these YouTubers, what's coming out now is some of the sick and sadistic behavior that they are into. And maybe you think, oh, this has no effect on me. If it doesn't affect your children or your neighbors, it affects children that they know. I will guarantee it. They're, they're, they don't get all these views and all this stuff on accident. And so whenever we're seeing something like this, we have to recognize the issue, recognize the problem. And I remember when I first came to Christ, I remember thinking about how the actors were so manipulative and some of the stuff they would get into and some of the stuff they would practice and say. And, and it was like, wow, it makes a lot of sense though, because I do remember some of the people that were involved in drama class. And, and I remember being in high school and seeing that, and they were very different individuals. And truth be told, I was like, okay, that makes sense that they can be manipulated like that. And that's how Satan usually gets people is on these weak spots where they might have those places that he can use in a way to influence other people. So when you're looking at all of a sudden, these aren't even people that have grown up in high school, college or whatever, or grown up in their community. They have sat in in front of their computer screens, their video game, uh, you know, whatever console they're using and have been watching others. And now they're watching themselves. And some of this stuff you can't even watch. It's so foul mouth and disgusting. So when those behaviors come to the forefront and you realize all of this has been marketed to children. All these videos are being watched for hours and hours and hours and hours. Forget the influence of the NFL that has so much of a stranglehold on so many people or, or MLB or anything like that, sports, college sports, whatever. This is something even crazier in terms of how much people are watching, dressing like, buying, all the things that they're being involved with. And I only say all of that to get you ready for some of the crazy stuff that we're about to find out that these so many of these streamers, so many of these people that are giving advice, which is what they're doing while they're playing video games and giving their ideology and worldview, so many of them are sick and disgusting. And the first one I want to talk about on this show is the recent bombshell, not only allegations, but there obviously is some admission uh, to certain aspects of what's going on. And that is with somebody we've covered from Mr. Beast's team, and that is Chris Tyson who has left his family behind to dress up like a woman and call himself Ava. Now, you're going to be seeing clips in this show where the hosts, who are not believers, 
but they are giving a diagnosis and they are simply just explaining some of the things that are going on, will refer to Chris as Ava. We will not do that because it is simply a lie. And the truth is, is this is a man who I believe, and we've uh, we we can put a link in the description, I believe was taken away because of his insidious love for disgusting things that are online, taken away and brought him to a place where he is literally, you know, dressing as a woman uh, and parading himself around like that after having a family. But I want to read this statement before we get into the minutia of it. Here is what he recently had to say, quote, I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments. If it hurt or offended anyone, it was not my intent. Seeing recent events, we've mutually decided it's best I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media to focus on my family and mental health. And Mr. Beast had to put it this way, quote, over the last few days, I've become aware of the serious allegations of Ava Tyson's behavior online and I am disgusted and opposed to such unacceptable acts. During that time, I have been focused on hiring an independent third party to conduct a thorough investigation to ensure I have all the facts. That said, I've seen enough online and taken immediate action to remove Ava, which is Chris, from the company, my channel, and any association with Mr. Beast. I do not condone or support any of the inappropriate actions. I will allow the independent investigators the necessary time to conduct a comprehensive investigation and will take any further actions based on their findings. So let's see what Rolling Stone magazine says about the findings and so forth. Ava Chris Tyson steps away from all things Mr. Beast amid transphobic attacks. Guys, this isn't a transphobic attack. This is an attack on somebody grooming a middle schooler when he was a college student. And I want to show you this because multiple people have brought this out and the first one was actually a very, not as well-known channel, but it goes by Prism42. And I'm only get, I can only play a few clips, but he goes through some of the ways that these are public statements on servers. These are public statements on Twitter or X. I think it was Twitter at that time. And you can see some of the stuff and some of the grooming tactics and some of the weird stuff that this guy was into. He says, I really enjoy playing Fortnite. Would you guys want to watch me stream? And Lava GS says, please stream again. And he says, thanks, Dad. You'll want to moderate it. I get concerned because this guy that you talk to online, you've been socializing with, you've been playing video games with, he's asking you, Chris, does she know about your hentai addiction? And that's the thing is this guy at this point, November 12, 2003, he would have been 14 years old. I know Jimmy might come out to defend this kind of behavior. Like maybe you guys joke about sending nudes to 14 year olds often. I, 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 I don't know if you guys do that. You, I don't know if you guys joke about sending nudes to 14 year olds often, but that happened and it's right here and it's still up online. And I gotta say, this is some really messed up stuff. You should not be talking to a 14 year old this way under any context. You shouldn't be saying it in a joking manner. You shouldn't be saying it in any kind of manner because this is someone that you talk to one-on-one. -on -one. You shouldn't even be talking to a, a middle schooler one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's freaking weird. And of course you have other stuff right here. This is a bad way to hide your hentai. Uh, I don't know, like, what exactly were you discussing with this guy, man? Why is he asking you about hentai so much? Why is he talking about hentai with you? It continues, he says, check again and he, he tags you, I think. At least that must be you, or he's tagging you. And of course he says, I posted some fire nudes for you, please no share. And this is someone that you're talking to that is 14 years old. Now he's not the only one now, and but he has been given the credit for exposing this and looking into it. Uh, but other streamers have come out, ones with big followings, like Charlie, uh, also known as Penguins Zero, uh, online. He has over 15 million subscribers. So if you guys are thinking this isn't a big deal, this is a big deal. These are a lot of people, a lot of people following him, a lot of waiting on bated breath on anything they have to say because they happen to play video games well and record it. But nonetheless, here are some of the things he pointed out on top of what was already exposed. Under no circumstances should an adult be in a group chat with a bunch of children sending for America pictures. Like, that's still bad. That's still horrible. That's still really weird. From what I can tell, most of the screenshots and a lot of the compiled evidence comes from this YouTuber, Prism42. This seems to be where most of it started, and since this video dropped, 
there's been a lot more screenshots that have come out with all kinds of really bad things that were being said to or about minors. I've only shown a couple here, but there's quite a bit more, and they're all just as bad, if not worse. Like, for some reason, Ava Tyson had a habit of calling a 13 or 14 year old daddy. Like, you can't just write that off as being like quirky, inappropriate, edgy jokes that people are blowing out of proportion. That's unacceptable. It's indefensible. One thing that still persists, and, and one thing that a lot of people have been showing, is that Ava Tyson may have actually commissioned a piece from Shadman, or at the very least, purchased a piece from Shadman. There's a clip from a Mr. Beast video where there is Shadman art hanging on the wall, belonging to Ava Tyson. I censored the close-up of the art for obvious reasons, but this is something that is irrefutable. The only question about Ava Tyson and Shadman's connection is whether or not a piece was commissioned or purchased. But at the very least, a piece was owned by Ava Tyson. And I don't think there's any wiggle room to just explain this away as some kind of innocent whoops-a-daisy moment of being ignorant of what the art was. With Ava Tyson having publicly talked about content and art like that, and then also owning a Shadman piece, I don't think it's some kind of coincidence. Like, I don't think it was an accident and they didn't know Shadman drew child porn. And what's crazy is when you're hearing him talk about Shadman and the stuff that he was pushing. I can't even say the words. I'm so disgusted. I am a father of four. My children are 11, 9, 7, and 5. And I'm just like about to be 5. <laughs> Sorry, she's actually 4 right now. I'm like, that somebody would draw something like that is so unbelievably disgusting and grotesque. But what's interesting when it comes to Chris is it's worse than, it's not worse. There, I don't know much worse that you can get. Not only the grooming, but he was actually caught uh, in a live stream talking about it and telling people and sending a link and then saying, well, if you want to go check that out, of what is known as revenge stuff of an actress uh, who had a boyfriend who she sent pics to, which by the way, please, if you're a young person watching this or your children, be really careful about giving them a smartphone, number one. Number two, please, 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 if you're someone young watching this, do not send pictures, inappropriate pictures. Doesn't matter how much you think this person loves you. If they love you, they wouldn't accept a t picture of you outside, especially outside of marriage, but they would not accept that sort of picture from you. But to using it as revenge against this lady and Chris actually posted a link so people could see it. The story is she sent um, pictures to her boyfriend, her now ex-boyfriend, and um, he leaked them out. And um, But um, the link's in the description if you want to see them. I mean, I'm not endorsing people to go look at somebody else's private business, but I know that uh, you know people might want to see them, so there, it's there if you want it. Now, Chris has his own issues, and that's why he's been kicked out there. But he's not the only very popular streamer who's recently been kicked off of certain things. And one very popular streamer was Dr. Disrespect, a big fan of the 49ers. In fact, he was being used by them in terms of, uh, you know, playing around and, and promoting the football team. But in 2020, it was very interesting because he was booted off of Twitch where he was making them a bunch of money and he was making a bunch of money and nobody knew why. And it was kind of kept secret until just recently when someone who was working at Twitch tweeted this out just randomly. Quote, he got banned because he got caught sexting a minor in the then existing Twitch Whispers product. He was trying to meet up with her at TwitchCon. The powers that could be read in plain text. Case closed, gang. Now, Dr. Disrespect would first say basically, oh, I don't know. There was no wrongdoing. Doesn't say it wasn't true, whatever. But eventually, because of this, gets exposed as someone who is a married man trying to step out of the bounds of marriage with a minor, all that stuff. Uh, it's very interesting, gets exposed, and then is off as well, is pushed out, uh, loses contracts, all that stuff. And a lot of people were very upset because people came immediately against him. But when it came to Chris, because he likes to dress like a woman, it seems like, oh, well, we can't say anything too fast on that. Let's get all the facts. When it was very quick to judge him, both are wicked people. There's no hero in this story. And it's crazy because not only you have, obviously, Chris getting out of there, then you have Dr. Disrespect, he's gone. And recently, a young man who I think 
is probably making his ways and, and people are following him uh, because he acts as if he is mentally challenged was exposed, not because he's faking uh, being mentally challenged, but was exposed because prior to becoming a Twitch streamer, he had a gay only fans page and then had to come out and, and give a weird, awkward apology and saying he was on drugs or something at that time. And I hope that he is repentant, but they're not repentant to salvation. They're just sad they got caught and he wanted to keep it a secret. But a lot of people, including guys like Sneeko or Andrew Tate, have come out against this behavior. And if you didn't know, Sneeko actually got his start uh, on Mr. Beast's uh, team uh, before, before not being in it anymore. And when you look at it, Andrew Tate had said some things, and this is a foul mouth guy who has semi converted to Islam, but I don't think he's actually following that. I just think he can get more followers and he can be very provocative, um, claiming that while also saying Christ is King, which would be impossible if you're a Muslim. But nonetheless, this is somebody who has come out against it. And some things he says is right, that people are going after the children and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, that that's correct. But there's a big, big problem. Andrew Tate himself is somebody who likes to go after the children and his brother Tristan, who has bragged with taking the virginity of women under the age of 18. And this is who they are. They are disgusting human beings as well. There are no heroes in these stories on all these Twitch streamers, on all these people that are doing these live shows that you're seeing online that are giving advice that are counter to the biblical doctrine of the sexual ethics, that are counter to any sort of ethics that are, are based in the nature of God. And it is a heartbreaking thing to see that. But look what has been exposed regarding Andrew Tate by a channel known as Milk Bar TV. I want you guys to check this out. This guy is also a sicko. There's a video from 10 years ago that showed me in a sexual act with one of my ex-girlfriends. There's a video from 10 years ago that showed me in a sexual act with one of my ex-girlfriends. From 10 years ago, 10 years ago. I didn't say the word listen. Did I say listen? Hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to say something about the video that's been released recently about me and my ex-boyfriend Andrew Tate. Andrew is my still great friend. What you guys saw on the video is just what we used to do. It was just pure game. He's a great guy. He would never hurt anyone. There's a video from 10 years ago that showed me in a sexual act Look with one of my ex-girlfriends. Look at the camera. Just don't listen. Look at the camera. Why are you getting hit? Why are you getting beaten? No <laughs> listen. You. Do as I say. There's a video from 10 years ago that showed me in a sexual act with one of my ex-girlfriends. No. If I said it was a game and she no. said it was a game, who are other people to then comment on our lives? It was between two camera. consenting adults and we decided to do listen. something ourselves and we both agreed it was fine. That's just kink shaming. Why are you getting beaten? Which that's all it is. Now, one of the biggest things that you're going to find, whether it's Andrew Tate, Tristan Tate, or any of the other guys, uh, that the it's not adult entertainment. You're a child with no self-control. Uh, that That's a fact if that's what you're always engaged in. But Andrew Tate did make a lot of his money by selling women as webcam girls. And when you look at Chris's story, uh, he was liking weird anime adult entertainment stuff. When you look at a lot of these stories, one of them who we mentioned was selling themselves. Uh, over and over again, it all goes back to this same thing. And I don't want to end a show ever on a sour note. And I want you, before you even hear these words, if you don't know Jesus Christ, all of this stuff, you can see the wicked things. Why are my kids watching this? Why are they all into this stuff? Whatever it is, guys, first of all, let's orient it back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's remember what Deuteronomy 6 says, Shema Israel, when it talks about hero Israel, the Lord thy God, your Lord is one. What it tells you to do is to teach these diligently to your children. And it's not just on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night or a Saturday night or a Friday night or, you know, because it's a Bible study night or whatever, but it's whether you're walking by the way, your life should be one where you're diligently teaching your children so they're not being taught by the world. So they're not being taught by Twitch streamers who are going after them in a sexual manner. Uh, or giving just horrible advice that's unbiblical. And what you need to do is turn to Christ. He has paid for your sins. Whether No matter how wicked the stuff we're talking about, if somebody would turn away from this wicked world and turn to Christ and put their trust in him, 
then he has paid it in full. He has he has literally made the payment for our sins. We put our trust in him. And on the day of judgment, rather than getting judged for every wicked thought you've had, every wicked thing you've done, and the wicked heart uh, that you have been practicing the very desires of it and even expressing it out of your mouth, we would actually say, put that on the cross because Jesus paid for our crimes. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't turned to Christ, not only did he die a public death, he rose a public death. You can know him personally. But I want to end on a good note. Not only the gospel, which is the best note possible, but Chandler from Mr. Beast actually has made a profession of faith, has even got baptized, and has been leading Bible studies. And the things we just talked about, all the wicked stuff that that was just exposed, if somebody would heed this advice that is given by Jesus regarding the things that you might look at or things that might keep you from the kingdom of God, I think if somebody would listen to this message and turn from it. I'm going to let him finish off on this because at least it's a good note. I don't know exactly where he is salvifically, but what he's reading from is very, very important and it's advice straight from Jesus that I think can benefit you. This has been Chad Davidson. This is the 511 News. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 18, verse 8 and 9. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eyes causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. It's a, it's a pretty scary verse to some, but uh, don't be scared, so. Because God will help you with your temptation, so. For example, like when I was, you know, first getting saved, I uh, I was listening to all kinds of music, like all kinds of music. And uh, God was starting to tell me to just stop listening to all kinds of music other than worship music for him. And because it was just making me think different things like and uh it would it wasn't helping me in my walk with Christ you know listening to music that had cursing and and just uh you know other other things talking about murder or whatever so it was it was just messing like it was making me think a certain way you know the mu- type of music I was listening to so I cut it off completely you know I stopped listening to music all kinds of music ex- except for music that glorified God and it has helped me tremendously with the way I think and the way I speak. And yeah, when I was listening to all kinds of music, I was thinking about the type of music I was listening to. Like that's the way I would act and talk and the thoughts that I had, you know, I had to deal with what I was listening to. So I cut it off and it's been great and I'm very thankful for the revelation that God gave me. So thank you for watching. Thank you guys so much for watching 511 News. You can check out some of the older episodes as well as the Good Fight Radio Show and videos we have right here on our YouTube channel. And this week's featured product is Hollywood's War on God. You can check this out at goodfight.org. God bless you guys.